All right, guys, so today we're going to be working on making an adapter plate to fit this Kia diesel engine into this carry deck yard crane right here. This right here is the old engine. And so the first part that I did was I got everything and I cleaned it all, put it all back together, and I need to pick up this distance right here from this distance right here. So I was able to clamp a straight edge right here, and then... I could then use a bore gauge to pick up that distance right there. It's not the best method to do this. It'd be much better to use a proper depth gauge, but I'm working with what I have here. So I was able to do that, and then picking up this distance to here, and it came out to being about 2.56 is the thickness of how thick I need to make this adapter plate. So the next step is I'm going to take this all back off. I'm going to take a picture of this so then I can go pick up the shape of this. And then we're going to have to plasma cut out two plates and it will be like a sandwich adapter plate to allow these two different engine combinations to work together. We'll also need to be doing some machining on the flywheel. I'm going to take down some distance right here. So I could reduce it down to 2.5 instead of 2.6. Then we also need to machine out a cylinder right here for the input bearing of the torque converter off the yard crane. So that's what this looks like right there. This plate has to get bolted to the flywheel. So we got to put the holes in it for that too. So I'm going to get to work here, guys. Alright guys, so the next step is to take a photo of this plate right here, and we have these uh, tape measures to use for scale. Uh, this is so that then when I upload the photo I can scale it to size. I'm not going to use this to get the exact bolt hole dimensions, but all I'm using this for is just to get the general shape right here. So then when I plasma cut it out, I can get that shape, but we're not going to use it though pick up these holes. For these we're going to use a milling machine with a digital readout. So basically what you do is you just hold the camera still and you snap a photo like this and then I can upload it then to Fusion 360 and draw this out in CAD. Alright guys so here's the basics of it. I uploaded this photo right here to Fusion 360 and then I was able then to use that to kind of generally scale the photo to what it was. It's not very accurate because of discrepancies in the angle of the camera and stuff like that, but then I then came up with this. It's basically gonna be two plates sandwiching uh, some uh, inch and a half by inch and a half solid bar, and uh, I still gotta clean it up for cutting. It's going to be the template for the two plates, and then when I weld this thing up, I'll then use the milling machine to dial in exactly where the holes need to be. This right here is a more refined version of the same file. Uh, I'm going to convert these over to DXF and then uh, upload them to my plasma table to cut them out of half inch steel. As you can see it's a little cleaned up and so they're ready to go. It's going to be two rings with blocks in between them to hold them up and then maybe then I'll fill in over here to complete it. So.
right guys, so it turns out the motor is locked up. The story behind this motor is that supposedly it's got only three hours on it, but it was inside some sort of homemade barge. And uh, the barge uh, sunk to the bottom of Lake Michigan, and then they pulled it out. And then the motor's been sitting ever since, but uh, we found one cylinder with some rust on the glow plugs, so I uh, took a mixture of... Uh, automatic transmission fluid and xylene and mixed it together and then I poured it into the glow plug hole. We're going to see now if it turns over better. A couple tries, but I she was able to bar it over. Stuff seemed to work. I'm a little bit concerned about the rubber seals, but I think it'll be fine. I made a huge mess now, and now I gotta clean it up. So this is what I came up with a clamping arrangement to secure the weld mint so that it doesn't, to try to minimize warpage and all that. And uh, for, to make up the gap, I just added these little blocks right here. I cut them out of uh, just mild steel a bar, inch and a half, and then, uh, so yeah, so we're going to weld this up. We may make pieces to go over here. Might not really need it, but probably wouldn't be a bad idea. We're going to see how this does. I could TIG weld it, but I'm probably just going to MIG weld it. I don't think it really needs to be TIG welded. It's just going into the yard crane. So, we'll see how this goes. Well guys, after measuring, you can see is that this thing shrunk. It shrunk a little bit into the centers over here where it was unsupported. Now if I was to make this again and I was building this for a customer, I would have just had a two and a half inch plate flame cut out and then ground and but I'm just trying to work with what I have here so I think this will do I probably should have added inside supports over here and tacked those in before I welded everything and that might have also reduced the flex but I think it'd be fine though once we put it in the machine and surface it down with a with a shell mill so we'll see how that goes alright guys so here's my setup on the milling machine we're going to be using the shell mill right here to face this off. It's on Bertha, a big, big ass Gordon milling machine. So, we're going to see how this goes. I might face off the bottom too. We'll see. It stayed pretty straight, but definitely the top needs to be done. As you can see, we're just barely touching off on it right now. It's going real light. All I'm going for is just clean up. Alright guys, here we have the final pass on the top. There's one little spot in the back that didn't clean up, but I'm going to leave it like that. But, yeah, moments like this sure make you happy to have auto feed. All I do to move this thing around is I can just drive it around these little tiny switches right here. Otherwise, this would be a pain. It's not too bad. It rocks a little tiny, tiny bit. When you flip it over, it does too. There's probably eternal stress and I kick myself now for not welding these in, but I think it will be fine. It's all gonna get bolted together anyways, so 
That should kind of squish it all out. 